Welcome to SNES Chronicles. Today we're going to talk about Populous, another great port of an Amiga game. A pretty unique one, considered to be the first god game. The difference between this and a game like SimCity or Warcraft is that you don't control anybody directly. Instead, you control the terrain, the weather, pretty much everything else than the people. You can only influence their decision. The goal here is to crush your opponent. And you really feel like a god. It seems you're playing on a table and you can see the civilization. There's a book to represent the map and a sort of slider for the magic. It all seems like an elaborate board game. The style is there. But since the interface takes a lot of space, there's not much space for detail, which leaves the playing area kind of bland. It really helps that the game has a lot of different sets of landscape and civilization, and some really original one. And the music, oh, where do I start? There is no music. Turning off the music or using this button only removes the background noise or wind, etc. And that annoying art thumping is controlled with the sound effects. And I want to hear the battle sounds, so I guess we're stuck with it. At first it looks kind of complicated and unfriendly. It is. The interface is all over the place, literally. First you level the terrain with A or B so you people can build bigger cities and settle elsewhere. X is the magic button. It will level everything around the town so it becomes a castle, which is the fastest way to grow your population. Your people will wander around, depending on what you tell them to do. Settle. Attack and invade. Merge for bigger armies. Or converge to the cross. The game calls it the Papal Magnet. The Papal Magnet. <laughs> Sorry, that name. You can put anywhere, and it tells your people to converge there. Once you're strong enough, knight them, and send them to battle. You need enough magic to do that. And the golden bar at the top right is your magic meter. It will advance as you gain population, and you'll get access to better magic. Earthquakes, swamps, volcanoes, floods, are the sort of things you can unleash on your enemies. But remember that you also need magic to level terrain. When your magic is maxed out, and you're pretty sure to win, you can activate Armageddon. Everybody's gonna converge to the center and battle for a final time. At the bottom left you have buttons that will let you center on things. There's also the question mark. You can set it on a building or unit to see its strength. It'll bring up info in the shield at the top right with two bars. Just focus on the left bar. When it's yellow and filled up, it means it's max strength. The blue and red bar at each side of your shield represents the population of you and your enemy. And will give out more magic the more it fills. At the bottom right are the magic and the options. I would recommend when you start the game to do a campaign. The tutorial is useless, since the only difference is the enemy won't attack you. They're not gonna teach you the game. The campaigns offer a variety and the difficulty ramps up slowly, pretty slowly. You also advance quicker if you perform better. Levels will have restrictions on you and your enemy, which makes each game different. There's 999 levels. But don't let this discourage you. Most of them will be skipped if you perform well. The appeal here I found is discovering all the different civilizations and landscapes, not necessarily finishing the game. Another thing you can do, and you can do this even from the campaign, is modifying all the options, and I mean all of them. Choose your side, the landscape, the difficulty, the magic you and your opponent can use. It's very thorough. You can see its Amiga computer roots. Learning to use the controller with shortcuts is what makes the game fun. If you only use your D-pad to activate everything, you'll get tired very quickly. There's a controller shortcut for almost everything. For example, L plus R plus Y turns your leader into a knight. Finally, we're using the Super Nintendo controller as it should be. And this brings me to the manual. You might not need it, but I would still recommend checking it out. Even just for the shortcuts. It'll make your life much easier. If you even find this game interesting. When I started out, I wasn't really excited. But levels are short, gameplay is simple once you get a hang of it, and it's extremely addictive. The I'll finish one more level kind of game. And like I said, finding out all the different types of landscape is fun, and they do all have different population growth and severity of terrain, so they play differently. I'd recommend this if you like real-time strategies and you never tried a god game. Try this one out, it's quite fun, and you'll see where it all came from. Have a good day, evening or night, and remember, have fun. Peace.
If you appreciate, please like and subscribe. There's also a Facebook page, and every episode is available in French.